Learning all the different French pronouns and figuring out where the heck to place them in your sentences can get complicated really quickly. In this video, I'll go over subject pronouns, direct object pronouns, indirect object pronouns, e and en, and their placement in sentences. So what is a pronoun? This is important to understand before we proceed. Pronouns are simply words that replace other words that were already previously mentioned in order to avoid repeating them, which makes communication quicker and more efficient. Having a good grasp of these is huge for sounding more fluid and natural in French. For example, in English you can say, Paul is really good at basketball, Paul plays every day. To sound less repetitious, you can say, Paul is really good at basketball, he plays every day. Everyone knows you're already talking about Paul, so you can replace Paul with he. He is a pronoun, the word he replaces Paul. Another example, I can't find my wallet, I think I lost my wallet. To now repeat yourself, sound more natural and communicate quicker, it's better to say, I can't find my wallet, I think I lost it. It is also a pronoun, as it replaces my wallet in this sentence. So enough with English, let's get back to French. So a standard sentence in French will look like subject, verb, and then object. For example, David mange une pomme. You have a subject, a verb, and an object. So let's start with the first type of pronouns, the easy ones, the subject pronouns. These are the ones you see when conjugating verbs. So our subject pronouns are je, meaning I, tu, meaning you, il, meaning he or it for a masculine noun, elle, meaning she or it for a feminine noun, on, which can mean a lot of things, but mainly we in informal conversation, or one, as in people in general, nous, which is the formal version of we, vous, which is the plural form of you, or the formal version of you when talking to one person, il, with an s, is they for a masculine group, and elle, with an s, is they for a feminine group. So for example, in our previous sentence, we would use the il pronoun to replace the subject in order to avoid repeating ourselves. So for example, we would say, David mange une pomme, il a faim, he is hungry. The next two types of pronouns are direct object pronouns and indirect object pronouns. But before we get into those, let's talk about objects in general in sentences. The object is what is impacted by the verb. The object is on the receiving end of the action. As I just mentioned, objects can either be direct or indirect. Direct objects are when there is nothing in between the verb and the object. The verb acts directly on the object, hence the name direct object. In other words, there is no preposition in between the verb and the object. For example, in the sentence, David mange une pomme, there is no preposition in the way of the verb and the object. Manger acts directly on pomme, making pomme a direct object. However, in the sentence, David demande à Emma, David is asking Emma, the preposition à is in the way of the verb demander and Emma, making Emma an indirect object in this sentence. This will be explained more as we go forward in the video, but first let's continue with our second type of pronouns, direct object pronouns. So again, direct object pronouns are words that replace direct objects, and our direct object pronouns are m, or m apostrophe in front of a vowel or mute h, t, or t apostrophe in front of a vowel or mute h, l, meaning him or it, for a masculine word, and that turns into L apostrophe in front of a vowel or mute H. La, which can mean her or it for a feminine word, which also turns into L apostrophe in front of a vowel or mute H. Nous, vous, and les. Let's take the verb voir 
meaning to see. This verb does not require the preposition a, so it acts directly on its object, meaning we'll have to use direct object pronouns when this verb is used. So for example, David me voit, David sees me, David te voit, David sees you, David le voit, meaning David sees him, or it for a masculine noun. So here, le can replace a guy's name, such as Kyle, or a masculine noun, such as le chat. David la voit, which can mean David sees her, or it for a feminine noun. So here, la can replace a female's name, such as Vanessa, or a feminine noun, such as la lune. David nous voit, meaning David sees us. David vous voit meaning David sees you, as in you plural, or you formal. And finally, David les voit, meaning David sees them. So this can be a group of people or a group of things, and whether it's masculine or feminine doesn't matter. So where do you place them in your sentences? Direct object pronouns are placed just before the verb, as seen in all of our previous examples just now. For verb tenses with an auxiliary and a past participle, for example, le passé composé, the direct object pronoun goes before the auxiliary verb. For example, David t'a vu, David saw you, the T apostrophe is placed just before the auxiliary verb. In sentences where there is a conjugated verb and an infinitive verb, the direct object pronoun goes before the infinitive. For example, je vais manger le chocolat. Je vais le manger. I'm going to eat it. The pronoun le is placed before the infinitive here, which is manger. The only time a direct object pronoun goes after the verb is in the affirmative imperative, basically when giving commands. For example, mange le, meaning eat it. Now moving on to indirect object pronouns. As previously stated, an indirect object is when the object is not being directly influenced by the verb. There's a preposition in the way. There's a preposition in between the verb and the object. And 99% of the time, this preposition is going to be a. Again, the preposition is in the way of the verb and object, making the object indirect. So basically, you'll be using indirect object pronouns with verbs that are followed by a. And here is a verb list of the most common verbs followed by a, in my experience. There are quite a few more, and yeah, you can memorize a long list of these verbs, but I think the best way to get used to them is by reading and listening to the language as much as possible. So here are our indirect object pronouns, and again, these are words that replace indirect objects. And as you notice, they look the same as our direct object pronouns, except for the words lui and leur, which are the ones we'll have to pay attention to. Let's take the verb téléphoner. In French, this verb requires the preposition a, which can be trippy since it doesn't in English. In English, we don't say to call to someone or to phone to someone, but since it requires a in French, the objects in sentences with it will be indirect. So some examples, David me téléphone, meaning David is calling me. David te téléphone, David is calling you. So this is where it gets interesting. So while me and te can also be direct object pronouns, lui is uniquely an indirect object pronoun. So for example, David téléphone à Kyle, you can replace à Kyle with lui. David lui téléphone. Same thing with the next example, David téléphone à Vanessa, David lui téléphone. Lui replaces à Vanessa. So here's where it gets a little tricky. Lui can represent both males and females. Context will decide who the pronoun is referring to. Then we have David nous téléphone to say David is calling us. And then we have David vous téléphone to say David is calling you, plural, or you, formal. And then we have the pronoun leur, which is uniquely an indirect object pronoun. 
So for example, David téléphone à Kyle et Vanessa. David leur téléphone. Leur replaces à Kyle et Vanessa. For placement rules of indirect object pronouns, I'm going to sound like a broken record because they are the exact same as direct object pronoun placement rules. Indirect object pronouns are also placed just before the verb as seen in all of our previous examples just now. For verb tenses with an auxiliary and a past participle, for example, le passé composé, the indirect object pronoun goes before the auxiliary verb. For example, David lui a demandé. In sentences where there is a conjugated verb and an infinitive verb, the indirect object pronoun goes before the infinitive. For example, je vais demander à Michel, je vais lui demander. I'm going to ask her. The pronoun lui is placed before the infinitive here, which is demander. Just like direct objects, the only time an indirect object pronoun goes after the verb is in the affirmative imperative, you know, when giving commands. For example, dis-lui, meaning tell him. Just a quick side note, me becomes moi and te becomes toi in the affirmative of l'imperatif. For example, dis-moi, meaning tell me, or dis-toi, tell yourself. Next up are the notorious pronouns i and en. I did a long detailed video on these two pronouns, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Basically, i replaces places or a plus something or a place, while en replaces things or de plus something or a place. These rules make a lot more sense with some examples. So first, let's look at some examples with the pronoun i. So first example, tu vas au cinéma? So you can reply and say, oui, je vais au cinéma. But in order to avoid repeating what was already said, you can simply say, oui, j'y vais, meaning, yes, I'm going there. Here, i replaces au cinéma, so you don't have to repeat it. One more example, tu penses à la situation? So you can reply and say, non, je ne pense pas à la situation. Or you can simply say, non, je n'y pense pas. No, I'm not thinking about it. Here, i replaces à la situation, so you don't have to repeat it. For placement rules, I am yet again going to sound like a broken record since the rules are the same as the ones for direct and indirect object pronouns. E is placed just before the verb it modifies. For verb tenses with an auxiliary and a past participle, E goes before the auxiliary verb. For example, je suis allé à Vancouver, j'y suis allé, I went there. In sentences where there is a conjugated verb and an infinitive verb, i goes before the infinitive. For example, je vais voyager à Vancouver. Je vais y voyager. I'm going to travel there. Here, the pronoun i is placed before the infinitive here, which is voyager. Just like the other pronouns, i is only placed after the verb in the affirmative of the imperative. For example, vas-y. Allons-y, allez-y. Now let's look at the pronoun en and some examples. So for example, tu veux du chocolat? So you can answer and say, oui, je veux du chocolat. Or you can say, oui, j'en veux, which means, yes, I want some. Here, en replaces du chocolat in order to avoid repeating it. Another example, j'achète sept bananes. I'm buying seven bananas. You can say, j'en achète sept. I'm buying seven of them. Here, en replaces banane in order to avoid repeating it. Last example, tu sors de la piscine? Are you getting out of the pool? Oui, je sors de la piscine. Or you can just say, oui, j'en sors. Yes, I'm getting out of there. Here, en replaces de la piscine, so you don't have to repeat it. Nothing new here for placement rules. En is placed just before the verb it modifies. For verb tenses with an auxiliary and past participle, like le passé composé, en is placed just before the auxiliary. For example, 
As-tu acheté des bananes? Oui, j'en ai acheté. En goes right before the auxiliary verb in the sentence. In sentences where there is a conjugated verb and an infinitive verb, en goes before the infinitive. For example, il va faire des biscuits. He's going to make cookies. Il va en faire. He's going to make some. Here, en is placed just before the infinitive verb, which is faire. And as expected, en is only placed after the verb in the affirmative of l'impératif. For example, profitez-en, meaning enjoy it. What usually gives us learners problems is when we want to use more than one pronoun in the same sentence. It's really easy to freeze up and get confused about word order. So let's look at an awesome French pronoun order table, which shows the order of pronouns in sentences regardless of their function. So first we have our subject pronouns, which go before me, te, ce, nous, and vous, which go before le, la, l apostrophe, les, which go before the indirect object pronouns lui and leur, which go before I, which goes before en. And there you have it. This is our French pronoun order for when we want to use more than one pronoun in a sentence. You might have noticed the pronoun se in our table, which is a reflexive pronoun, which we haven't talked about yet. I'll talk about reflexive pronouns in another video. But basically, it describes an action two or more people perform with or for each other. For example, il se voit means they see each other. Back to double pronoun order. We want to put two pronouns in the same sentence. So let's take this sentence for example. Emma donne le cadeau à David. You could use two pronouns here and say Emma le lui donne to say Emma is giving it to him. So here, le replaces le cadeau and lui replaces à David. Our trusty table reminds us that le goes before lui in a sentence with both pronouns. Another example, elle donne des biscuits à David. To say she is giving some to him, you would say elle lui en donne. Here, lui replaces à David and en replaces des biscuits. Again, our trusty table reminds us that lui goes before en in sentences with both pronouns. By the way, you'll only be using two of these pronouns in the same sentence. That's why a lot of people call it double French pronoun order. If you were to use three in the same sentence, the sentence would sound bizarre. The only exception to this pronoun order rule is the pesky affirmative imperative, which is only slightly different as you see here. Le, la, l apostrophe, and les go before moi, toi, nous, and vous. For example, in order to say explain it to me, you would say explique-le-moi. There are actually more pronouns in French that are important to know, but we're going to save those for future videos, so stick around. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope this video helped you understand French pronouns at least a little bit better, as it's definitely something I've struggled with a bit, especially French pronoun order, as a learner myself. If it did, please hit that like button and subscribe in order to see future content. Also, if you want to get a little more French exposure in vocab, expressions, song lyrics, and more, feel free to follow me on any of my social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. I really do like sharing what I learn about the language there.